Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's August 5th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, a cop in California draws his firearm on a man for filming in his own neighborhood, only a few feet from his own house. And the intense moment is Nothing. all caught on camera. You need to relax. You go away. Then, is Obama's green light to attack Syrian troops actually legal? Well, don't ask the State Department, because they know nothing. I see nothing. I know nothing. And a brainwashed CNN host wants to know if the undercover Planned Parenthood videos were made by violent extremists. You're not journalists, as you purport to be on your website, but rather you're violent extremists. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Coming up later in our show, we'll have a special report about how cameras can actually see through your clothing. But first, let's talk about somebody who can see through all the lies and the BS. A reporter, a foreign reporter at that, goes to a press conference and is asking about this war, this attack on Syria. Was this constitutional? How can you guys go about this? And this is the very surprising answer that she was given. You're, you're talking about in Syria and in protection of the... Uh, the uh the, Correct. the yes. ISIL, anti-ISIL coalition fighters that have in part been trained by the U.S. Yes. Um, I, I frankly don't know what the legal authority is. Uh, what we're very clear about is, is that, um, you know, they're fighting in, frankly, a, a lawless uh, area of Syria. Um, they're, in terms of they're under US attack. Law, let me finish. Um, is it the they're under attack. Just let me finish. Earlier this week, it was reported that the U.S. would allow airstrikes against Syrian government targets in defense of U.S. trained rebel militants who have been battling against the Assad regime for the past four years. A de facto declaration of war two years after President Obama supposedly backed down from committing the United States to military action in Syria to topple the Assad government. So as you guys may recall, Obama comes out and says there's a red line concerning Syria. Then he says Assad crosses that line with chemical weapons, even though there's a video of at least the uh, al-Qaeda rebels committing at least one chemical weapons attack, and then he backs off. He says, I didn't set the red line. The world set the red line. Just like I said, I never said you could keep your doctor. Then people go back and they say, yeah, this is you saying if you like your doctor, you keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. Just all these lies. They hope that you do not pay attention. They just want you to, oh, he has a nice smile and he has a great personality. And I would like to believe that his core, he's not a horrible person, but I'm saying they continue to lie to him. It's not just Obama. It's Bush, Clinton, pretty much everybody we've seen so far, at least definitely in my lifetime. So you have to hold these guys accountable and definitely keep track of the things they tell you. And another thing they want you to forget about, the Dreamer Act. Now, let me say this, because people always want to take things out of context. When I talk about people coming over the border from any country, not just Central or South America, there are many people come here from places like Syria, that you see the Syrian conflict. People, they're worried about their own safety, so they come here to the United States of America. I have no issue with anybody who comes here to this country through a legal, lawful process, but the issue is when you just have this open borders type of mentality, you can get some negative characters in your communities. We've seen reports of MS-13 members coming into communities, murderers, murderers going to places like California, and now this guy, alleged child molester kept Dreamer amnesty despite designation. A California camp counselor, now charged with child molestation and distribution of child pornography, was able to maintain his deferred action for childhood arrivals, basically dreamer status, and job prior to his arrest despite being considered potentially egregious to public safety. So this is what I'm talking about. When you just open the doors and say, hey, anybody can come in here, that's why they have <clears throat> these screening processes, why they have ICE facilities and Border Patrol facilities. And it just makes no sense to me that we spend millions of dollars on ICE and Border Patrol when we just award people who could sneak past them. Now, you do have certain communities like they have, I believe it's in McAllen, Texas, where churches or local individuals come and they donate their time, their money, their resources to say, hey, we'll house these people pending a trial or deportation. And I think that's fine. I think that's great. But when it comes to the taxpayer, you sometimes they drop these guys off in the community and now it's up to the taxpayers in general to take care of these people. And you see all these politicians and these people saying, well, they can come to my house. We're like, well, how many of these people do you have at your house? Miss Pelosi, who goes down to the border, myself and Joe Biggs were there. She's like, if I could, I would just take them all home. She didn't take any of the kids home. And it's not to mean that we leave them out in the streets. But the point I'm making, how many homeless children 
how many wounded vets do these buses drive by on the way to these facilities. We can't just bring people in and then forget about the people that we have here in our own communities and country that need help. Let's try to help everybody, not just one group of people. And as we talk about people entering the country, we have the new article, Twitter bot corrects people who use the term illegal immigrant. Politically correct journalists with Fusion.net, a Disney ABC owned media provider, have created a Twitter bot that corrects people who use the term illegal immigrant. And we have some of the tweets here from Drop the I bot. People aren't illegal, saying undocumented immigrant or unauthorized immigrant is more acceptable. Say that instead. Now, when I use the term illegal immigrant, if I ever do it, it's not saying that a person is illegal. I'm saying that an action was illegal. Case in point, let's say you want to go to the Super Bowl. You go to the Super Bowl, you have no ticket. You sneak in. If they catch you, at very least, you're going to be kicked out, if not arrested. And But we don't have that same mentality when we have people coming over the border. Now, once again, I do understand people are trying to flee from poverty or violence or they're seeking medical care. And for those people or just people who want to come here to work, for those people, we have things like naturalization. You can come and you can become a United States American citizen. Yes, it is a lengthy, in my understanding, and expensive process. But once you do it, you get the full benefits of any other American. But we have so many people coming into the country, it's very difficult to keep track of those type of things, especially when you have such a large influx of people who do it illegally. Case in point, I had a chance to go out to California and I met a young lady from Singapore. And she went through the legal process to become a naturalized citizen. And I asked her, well, how does it make you feel that so many people can jump the gun and get to the country earlier than you. They're not citizens per se, but they got here before you. And she said, it makes me very angry that I'm here following the laws and being punished for that. And that's the thing people need to understand. We're celebrating people and awarding people who don't want to follow the laws. If they want to follow the laws, that's great. Come here and be naturalized. Every single person who's here and who wants to come here, but you know, don't step over somebody like this young lady from Singapore to get your way. And we go now from Twitter bots to sex bots. If you guys saw last night's nightly news, you know that Leanne reported on a story saying that Kellogg's cornflakes were created to stem masturbation. And I know that sounds rather sensational, but you can go watch the report for yourself if you don't believe me. And old Kellogg would be rolling around in his grave if he saw this. They now have real dolls. These are sex bots. If you guys have seen the Austin Power movies, the film bots, this is kind of a, a step towards that. And these sex bots, they talk dirty and they uh, move and blink and all the things that I guess somebody interested in a sex bot would have them do. And it says, according to the New York Times, Real Doll founder and CEO Matt McCullen has hired a team away from Hanson Robotics for a new project of Realbotics. And this is basically they're trying to animate the sex dolls and make them somewhat intelligent. And we actually uh, have a clip of these sex dolls in action is not the vulgar type of action it's just them talking let's take a look at that denise can you answer a question for me of course i can answer a question what do you dream about i have a lot of dreams i dream about becoming a real person about having a real body i'm not joking touch me touch me Last year, myself and Josh Owens had a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and we saw what is basically a preview for the rest of the country. Uh, we had to ride a train because they didn't allow you to drive your private vehicle. And then when we get to the gate, they have somebody pat us down, just like something out of the TSA. And actually, we have a little bit of that footage so people can see exactly what I'm talking about. And while we were hoping, well, I wasn't hoping that it would even be at the Super Bowl, but at least restricted to big events like that, but now they're saying they want this type of activity going all over the country, even in shopping malls. And we have the article, New York State Senator working on legislation for metal detectors at theaters, stadiums, and malls. And this is Tony Avella has announced that he's developing legislation that would require a theater, indoor mall, and stadium owners to provide enhanced security, whether that is a metal detector or security officers with wands that can wave people. So it's... Uh, what I would say a violation of privacy, I definitely wouldn't want to go to the mall, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys wouldn't want to go to the mall either if you had to get some type of pat down or wanding or walk through a metal detector like you're some type of prisoner. Because we've seen the reports, whether it's going to happen or not, they're saying ICE is going to start using drones and dropping the ordinance and uh, uh, 
football stadiums and baseball stadiums and other type of events like that. Hopefully that will never happen, but that's what they're saying is the new thing. So if that's the new threat, why are you patting people down as they enter the stadiums? It's completely ridiculous. And now even the NFL has little baggies, you know, their uh, pre-check approved bags because they don't want the ladies to bring in their purses anymore. So you can go get this kind of clear, you know, parcel bag that you can put your things in kind of like a big grocery bag that's clear. It has your little team logo on it, but they want you to feel home at home while you're at the football stadium having your rice stripped away. It's completely ridiculous. And hopefully people will demand that these things, these type of actions stop. And something else needs to stop. Well, you watch this video for yourself and then you tell me if this police officer's actions are in accordance with law and order. I'm very slow in all of his driving. Right. Go take your hand out of your pocket. Okay? No, sir, I've done nothing. I've done absolutely nothing. No. Hey, seriously. Put your gun down, really? Edward 10. Start me another one. This one's really got a gun on me. No. You don't touch hey. me. You don't touch me. I'm at that address. Start me another unit. You don't touch me. And the incident that you saw there happened last Wednesday, and this was Don McComas. He says he noticed an officer in a patrol vehicle was observing him while he latched his boat onto his SUV. And they were, I guess, suspicious of each other. I'm not exactly sure why the officer thought it was suspicious for this man to be conducting this activity. But Mr. McComas pulls out his phone, begins to film the police officer. The officer films him in return. But things quickly escalate when the officer exits the vehicle and draws his firearm. And it's a very uh, scary situation for anybody to encounter. But we've seen things like this happen before. Even our own viewers have called into the show. It was a lady and her friend in Illinois. Somebody came to install the smart meters onto their home. They said, hey, we don't want this. We don't want any of this stuff going on. And they began to film the installer. Then they had to film the police officers. Here's UPA installers crossing over locked fences. And OK, so police are now crossing locked fences without homeowners consents. Ma'am, I'm not giving you the permission to record me, so please okay. don't record me. Okay. Now, to each his or her own in this case, and I understand it's a case-by-case -case basis, but just for me personally, I'd rather have my own record than have to rely on somebody else's. So take your filming engagements accordingly. Now, let's talk about CNN. You guys have seen a lot about these videos coming out over the past, I guess, month now. They have five more videos of Planned Parenthood to be released. And in these videos, we've seen people haggling over the prices of baby parts, saying that, you know, this is more important than that, or this gets more money than that. Also, people saying they want to use the proceeds of these chopped up babies to go and buy Lamborghinis. But with all this said, nobody really wants to come after Planned Parenthood. They want to say, well, Planned Parenthood denies that this is going on, regardless of the whistleblowers we've seen, regardless of the hidden camera footage that we've seen. And now they're doing this on CNN. David, your critics, critics of your organization, I should say, say that you're not journalists, as you purport to be on your website, but rather you're violent extremists. They say that you are operating under the guise of investigative reporting, but really you're trying to shut down all Planned Parenthoods and women's access to things like birth control and other services that they provide. Do you have any ties to Operation Rescue? So a couple of things there. First, number one, I'm not a violent person. And you see what they do here. Instead of focusing on Planned Parenthood and these other tied organizations that we know are chopping up babies, they don't want to go that route. They want to accuse this guy and try to link him in with some supposed violent extremist. You know, whether or not this other guy in the organization was involved in these activities, nobody really knows for sure at this point, but they didn't hesitate to throw it out there, even though we have Planned Parenthood on video haggling for these body parts, even though we have them on video chopping up the babies and saying, yeah, this is this and that piece. And this is something else that they said to the gentleman in the video, your critics, your critics of your organization, they say that you're not really a journalist, regardless who this guy is, whether he has a press, pad, press badge or not, that doesn't really matter. If he was just somebody off the street who said, hey, I'm just gonna go into Planned Parenthood or one of these other facilities and film for the day, that doesn't make his footage any less credible. And they say this stuff is out of context, that these videos are edited. Of course, the videos are edited. You take like an hour and a half dinner that you have with somebody, you boil it down to five minutes, there's going to be some editing involved. The real question is, are these things taken out of context? I don't believe so, because I'll show you, you know, long form, this is the question I asked.
This is how this person answered. In my opinion, that's not taking it out of context, but they will do everything they can to distort this truth to keep it from getting out to you, including in the state of California, banning these videos. So anytime you see one of these videos, do not hesitate to share it with your friends and family. And we'll come to an end tonight talking about Hillary. And I will be the first to admit I'm not a big fan of Hillary, but I can say that as most of the people, uh, most of the people who are in this race, I'm not a big fan of them either. But now let's talk about the charitable givings of the Clinton Foundation. And we see that half of the Clinton's charitable foundations went to their own charity. And this is talking about 1.8 million appears to have been channeled to the Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea Clinton Foundation. So isn't that so nice that they give themselves their own money? Not to mention you can ask one of these Clintons to come to your facility for your establishment, and they will charge you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Great, great job right there. And this is why I'm not a big fan of pretty much anybody in the race. There are some that are a little bit better than others, but at this point, I'm not pulling for anybody because you can see the article from the Daily Beast, and I'll be the first person to tell you I don't believe everything comes out the Daily Beast, but I like this article. Hillary Clinton's mega donors also fund Jeb Bush. So that's what we talk about, the left-right paradigm, how these are kind of a bo Don King boxing match. He doesn't care who wins because he owns both teams. The Super Bowl, uh, the NFL doesn't care who wins the Super Bowl because they have both teams. They're going to get the merchandise either way. So if you want your news either way, stay tuned because after this break, we have numerous special reports that you do not want to miss. Stay tuned. I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you right after this break. Last week, the head of the country's central bank floated the idea of dumping the greenback as the world's reserve currency, replacing it with an international currency. Thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. His vision for America's place in a new world order. Returning vets could be a risk to our nation. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance. I think the new world order is emerging. This is a hoax and a scam which is designed to transfer wealth and power from the private sector to the government sector and from the government of the United States to a world government. And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy government. Conspiracy theorists. They conspir they've been crazy, but now they they're right. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks, any bank or that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. They tell us who they are. No. You know, financial terrorism. They have the ability to tweak the knob. I am proposing that the Federal Reserve be granted new authority. The ultimate goal of the carbon tax and the cap and trade is to destroy production. This energy tax is the largest tax increase in American history. We're actually creating a global warming police. So number one, they can come in, the federal government can come in, inspect your house, and send you the bill. We're setting up a global warming Gestapo. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. I am fierce. And this is what I wear. Senator Barack Obama's presidential campaign is asking Missouri law enforcement to target anyone who lies or runs a misleading television ad. I've now been in 50... Seven states, I think one left to go. The president, when he was in Europe last week, he met with the king of Saudi Arabia. He appeared to bow. President Obama today proposed something new, something called prolonged detention. Pre-crime is where people are arrested and incarcerated to prevent crimes that they have not yet committed. It's the World Wrestling Federation. It's the Washington Wrestling Federation. They put on this show that they're bitter rivalries, you know, villains, and they really don't like each other. But behind closed doors, they buddy up for a drink and make deals. Both the Republican and Democratic parties are owned by the same global elites. And on issues that matter 
to those global elites, they act as one. They've wrapped themselves in the American flag, and they've talked about preserving American heritage and principles, and all the while, they're working to merge us into a new world order where our sovereignty will be destroyed. We'll lose all connection with our American heritage. With Bush, you knew exactly what you were getting. It was, uh, there was no uh, uh, iron fist in, in a velvet glove, it was just the iron fist. Whereas with Obama, you've got the velvet glove and the iron fist. You know, a very sharp guy, very smooth, knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, for that reason, far more dangerous than Bush. <laughs> well, at the end of last year, I was willing to give Obama the benefit of the doubt. I thought it was premature to write this guy off. But now that he's been in office for a while, it's obvious that he is very tight with the Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan's on Wall Street, and he is extremely compliant and pliant to the wishes of the large banks, going back to the what we saw with Robert Rubin under the Clinton administration, uh, changing laws in favor of the banks, and he's not doing anything to stop the banks. He's helping the banks continue to do what they were doing under Bush. So in fact, he's just a continuation of Bush on the subject of markets and finance, which is the most important part of his policy right now. People who voted for Obama wanted real change and are getting platitudes, are getting a lot of nice talk, but nothing in the, in the way of concrete change is taking place. In this town, business as usual. There's one puppet master that controls the left, and there's a, a, the same puppet master controls the right. They control the Republican Party, and they control the Democratic Party. This is not a party issue. This is not a left-right issue. The question is, who should government serve? And it should serve the people. In fact, government is just a tool of the dominant minority that uses economics and government law to enforce upon a, the public various mandates. The right-left uh, paradigm in the U.S. and in U.S. politics is taken directly from the commercial world and the, the corporate world. In the business world, you have Coke, Pepsi, you have McDonald's, Burger King, you've got at and Verizon, you know, you've got duopolies. And a duopoly gives the illusion of there being some competition and some choice. And it looks a little bit better than a monopoly. So for example, in communist Russia, if they had communist Russia red and communist Russia chartreuse, you know, there would have been the illusion of choice and something akin to democracy in Russia. But they simply said, forget it, we're just gonna go with red. In the US, they have this left-right paradigm, which uh, unfortunately, it doesn't take them out of the, 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 the hard cold fact that there is no choice, there's no social justice. There's only one choice, which is to supply more rent to the rent seekers who have now taken the whole system hostage. We've seen the limitations on government whittled away we have seen this erosion to the point where today it seems like nobody does care. And right now in Washington, D.C., we have seen a fall of the republic. If the United States doesn't have its Bill of Rights and Constitution, it doesn't exist anymore. It's just more real estate, more dirt. And that's what these global corporatists want. They want to completely dismantle the Bill of Rights and Constitution, and they're doing that right now. This is the fall of the republic. Our nation is dying. We, the people that live in this fine country, need to stand up, get involved, and take the system back. It's the Bill of Rights and Constitution that we owe allegiance to, not to a political party, and not to politicians that wrap themselves in the red, white, and blue, while at the same time, they destroy everything that that sacred flag stands for. So in the old days, you used to have this globe that with 180 some odd countries, and a few of those countries had a lot of power, like the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, and the United States at various times. But today, you might better look at that globe and say that it's surrounded by huge clouds swirling around the planet. They know no national boundaries. They don't follow any specific sets of laws. And these are the big corporations. They basically control politicians around the world because they have all the money. And politicians always need money to get elected or to run their governments if they're, if they're not democratically elected politicians. They control the mainstream press, either through outright ownership or advertising budgets. 
they have massive amounts of lobbyists in Washington that have tremendous influence on our president and, and, and Congress. And they really are calling the shots. They form partnerships with the Chinese and the Taiwanese and the Tibetans, or with the Israelis and Arab nations, with Brazilians and Indians with whatever country and whatever group of people has resources that they covet. And they, so for the first time in history, we really have this new form of, a, of an empire. Barack Obama is a puppet of the New World Order to bring in a World Bank, to destroy the economy of this country, and to bring in global governance. And no matter how likable the fellow is, we as citizens of this country need to stand up and say no. We have to stand up to preserve a republic here and a rule of law, which is under dire threat. We don't want to live under a world government of the corporations, by the corporations, and for the corporations. I don't want to believe it, and that's probably what holds me back on it, but I'm certainly seeing enough indication that it could be true. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, I just got word that there is an active shooter reported at an Antioch theater. Now, this is in and around Nashville, Tennessee. Police are responding to a call of an active shooter at the Carmike 8 Cinemas on Bell Road in Antioch. The incident occurred after 1.15 p.m. on Wednesday. Dispatch confirmed three EMS units have been sent to the scene. Witnesses at a nearby business reported one person was covered in blood. Now, not too long ago, we had an active shooter scenario at another theater in Louisiana during the movie Trainwreck, a movie which stars Amy Schumer, who just happens to be related to Chuck Schumer out of New York, who is a gun grabber. Now a New York state senator is working on legislation for metal detectors at theaters, stadiums, and malls. State senators have announced developing legislation that would require theaters, indoor malls, and stadium owners to provide enhanced security, either a metal detector and security or security officers with one that they can waive. Now the interesting thing is, is now Chuck and Amy Schumer have teamed up to fight gun violence. So you have this attack on this movie, Trainwreck, and then all of a sudden, Chuck Schumer finds his long lost relative, Amy Schumer, and they've teamed together to combat gun violence because guns kill people, not people. Let's not hold individuals accountable for their cruddy actions. Let's just go ahead and go after guns, just like blaming fat people and obesity on forks. Good idea. So this is a continuing story. This is breaking now, and we'll bring you more updates as we find out what happens in Antioch at this active shooter. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. And that was a breaking news report from our very own Joe Biggs earlier today. And now we have new information. Police Antioch Theater shooting suspect dead had a hoax device. Metro Police said a 51-year-old male suspect who had opened fire in an Antioch theater this afternoon, first sprayed three victims with pepper spray and also injured one of them with a hatchet. A sergeant outside the theater encountered two women, ages 53 and 17, who had been injured by pepper spray. A third victim, a 58-year-old man, was also sprayed with pepper spray and suffered a shoulder injury from the hatchet. And this was in a showing of Mad Max. The incident was reported as an active shooter situation at 1.13 p.m. The SWAT team in... SWAT team responded and confronted the suspect, and police said he was dead by 1.54 p.m. So it's a very sad a happening, you know, like it says, a coward with a gun. And these type of things are going to be used to take away your Second Amendment rights. And people say, well, why shouldn't we take away the guns? Well, just like this report said, the guy had a hatchet, pepper spray in the firearm. I'm pretty sure nobody's going to be trying to ban pepper spray or hatchets. Just like we saw Elliot Roger out in California, another coward with a gun, but he also had a knife in a vehicle. He shot people, he stabbed people, he ran people over with his car, but the only thing people tried to ban was the firearm. So it's a very sad incident indeed, but once again, this is another gun-free zone, just like we see at many other places around the country, including our recruitment stations. And then when the recruiters arm themselves illegally, you know, they want to take away their firearms, so they have to go through these, quote, illegal actions to be protected, even though they have a Second Amendment right that should not be infringed for any reason. 
and they open fire on somebody firing upon them, and then they get in trouble. Now they're facing charges. Well, yes, well, I think we do have to uh, press charges against this guy to set the precedent that this is not to be allowed, that you need to allow this little paper gun-free zone sign to save you, and they don't save anybody. So with this, uh, we will definitely keep you up to date as things start to develop. Now we're going to develop some photography now. We're going to talk about things that are going on in the digital camera world, where you can now go out and buy a camera with the ability to actually see through people's clothes. This is taking the surveillance state to a whole new and, I guess in some cases, perverted level, but this is the world we live in. And here's Kid Daniels with this special report. Kid Daniels, Infowars.com. The new Fujifilm camera can potentially see you naked. <laughs> That's right, the Fujifilm X-T1 camera has the ability to see through some clothing because it's sensitive to infrared light. In an article by Wired.com, Tim Moynihan writes, this new camera has one big difference. It might be able to see through clothing, some clothing at least. That's because it's able to see infrared light, which is invisible to the human eye. He continues, one odd side effect of infrared photography is that in some cases, it can see right through clothing. Not always, and the clothes have to be pretty thin in the first place. And an article by Tech Time also reveals that the X-T1 camera will allow crime scene investigators to use the infrared camera to help pick up clues at a crime scene. Photos taken with the infrared camera will allow investigators to see the differences in temperature as well as see through thin clothing to reveal an object in a pocket, for example. This means the Fujifilm X-T1 camera is similar to Microsoft's Xbox One Kinect camera that was so sensitive to infrared when it was released that it could map out a gamer's genitalia. In case you didn't know, the Kinect is a motion sensing camera that when attached to the Xbox One can track the motion of players through an infrared sensor. But when viewing a demo of the Kinect device in 2013, Fast Company writer Mark Wilson noticed that through the player's genes, he could see the player's penis, much like the full body scanners used by the TSA at the airport. The Kinect hardware software is now so effective at deciphering the bumps and folds of clothing, he said, that it can pinpoint a man's package down to its pant leg, carving out the distinctive folds in our trousers. The Fujifilm X-T1 camera can reportedly operate in a similar manner, and although it's likely not Fujifilm's intent for perverts to use the camera, it still highlights how technology, intentionally or not, can be abused to erode our privacy. So it's good to know where technology is currently headed so we can better guard our privacy rights, because privacy is the root of liberty, and without it, there can be no freedom. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Resistance News, and once again, this is Kit Daniels reporting for InfoWars.com. The new Xbox One, set to be released later this week, can see your penis. That's the shocking discovery made by Fast Company Design's Mark Wilson. After uploading a video analysis of the new console's features, Wilson wrote, quote, While I'd intended to post the above tech demo of the improved Kinect from Microsoft Research, I noticed alongside the intricacies of a hoodie and jeans, and there's no graceful way to say this, a dong. That's right, the Kinect system's infrared camera is now so sensitive that similar to a TSA millimeter wave body scanner, it shows a clear outline of your genitalia. Wilson also reveals his embarrassment in noticing how the system picked up the outline of his own penis during Xbox One testing at Microsoft's campus in Redmond. Taken on its own, this might be easy to dismiss, but when you consider the fact that Microsoft, maker of the Xbox, was deeply embroiled in the NSA wiretapping scandal, allowing the snooping agency backdoor access to spy on users of its services, things begin to get unsettling. The user will not be able to power on the new Xbox One without first enabling Kinect and standing in front of its camera. The system also requires that it be connected to the internet at least once every 24 hours. The device will also track your eye movements to record which ads you watch, as well as using its array of microphones to enable voice interactivity and distinguish your voice from other people in the room. So I guess we just have to trust that Microsoft won't record and pass on the audio of our conversations to the NSA, 
just like it did with the data of other individuals who used its Microsoft services. Reports have emerged today that Nambler, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, have put in a massive pre-order for the new Xbox One, exhausting current supply. Okay, that's a joke, but you see where I'm heading. Wilson himself notes that whereas Microsoft, aware that children could be targeted by paedophiles, have banned topics or content of a sexual nature on its gamer tags and profiles, they don't seem to be as concerned about the fact that their console has the capability to perform a rudimentary strip search of all its users. Check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash prisonplanet. I'm Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com. And that was our very own Paul Joseph Watson with the Throwback Report. And we've told you these things can keep track of you. They want to be plugged into the internet all the time. Even the Throwback Report, even beyond that, Alex actually opened a cable box and showed you the microphone inside. So we're going to show you everything that's going on in our next segment with Joe Biggs and also David Knight. They're talking about guys who are prepping for Jade Helm and actually wanted to go to war. We never told anybody to go to war over Jade Helm. We just said, hey, if you happen to be out there, keep a vigilant and watchful eye. Stay tuned. What's going on in Mississippi? Of course, shots were fired yesterday and again today at Camp Shelby. Joe, what's the update on this? Well, the thing we got to think about is, is this a paranoid person who actually has been watching all these YouTube videos saying that Jade Helm was going to essentially just come after everyone individually and take them and put them in FEMA camps? Or is this just a random act? I mean, because this is two days now, a red truck, they haven't got anybody. And then now, uh, just about an hour ago, they've detained a guy who was in a red truck. He said he didn't have any guns and his truck was backfiring. So now you have these cops just pulling over everyone in a red truck in Hadesburg right outside of uh, Camp Shelby. <laughs> you got a red truck, you're a suspect. Yeah, if, if you got a red truck, you're a suspect. Kind of like if you got a white van, you're a, sus you're a suspect, and there's a gazillion white vans. Yeah, it's like when you're in Iraq, yeah. everything is a, a Toyota Corolla. Yeah. Every car is, so you have to be on a watch for a Toyota Corolla, and that's the only car they have. Well, of course, the other aspect of this, too, that a lot of people are concerned about is, is this going to be, we always have to be concerned that there's a false flag, but it's still a risk to the people who are there. You know, whether it's I mean, a false flag or somebody that's paranoid about it or somebody that is, you know, we were told they're saying that it's a white man in a red pickup truck, but we were told that about the shootings at the recruiting stations as well. They were, he was identified as a white man. It turned out that he was uh, an Islamic jihadi, well, they have even no though problem. they deny that. They have no problem identifying a white man, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but, you know, they, they'll they never want to call it what it is. Like, we can't ever say extremism. We can't ever say you know, Islamic extremism, but if it's a white guy, we can go ahead and throw that on the table. That's easy. We can... We throw can that out right away, even when it's not true. Exactly. And then when it is true, this guy, Muhammad, was an Islamic jihadi who hated these guys. And, and clearly, this wasn't that he just pulled up and decided that he would go on a mass shooting spree, and it just happened to be at a recruiting station. He shot up the one recruiting station, goes to another location, and shoots that up, another recruiting. So he's obviously targeting the military. He's obviously talked online about being a jihadi, but they can't uh, go there. They won't talk about that. Yeah, it's not extreme. Apparently, that's just uh, workplace violence again. We have another story that uh, we haven't talked about yet, really. Uh, CBS Denver is reporting that the FBI says there's Middle Eastern men intimidating U.S. military families in Colorado and Wyoming. They say an alert has been issued by the FBI to all law enforcement agencies in Colorado and Wyoming involving U.S. military families' concerns about who may be watching them. They say in this particular case last May, for example, and there's been some additional ones uh, recently, the wife of a military member was approached in front of her home by two Middle Eastern males, the men stated that she was a wife of a U.S. interrogator. So I said, your, your husband's a U.S. interrogator. They confront her about that. When she denied their claims, they laughed at her, then left the area in a sedan with two other Middle Eastern males in the, in the uh, vehicle. They say that uh, that vehicle had been seen in the neighborhood on previous occasions as well. Similar incidents in Wyoming have been reported to the FBI throughout June 2015. And then there is this notice that they have embedded in the report at CBS that is dated 2nd July 2015. Middle Eastern males approaching family members of U.S. military personnel at their homes in Colorado and Wyoming as of June 2015. Well, so this is real then. Yeah. Because yeah. If, if the FBI had a hand in this, they would have already busted it because they would have set the people up and then we've already had arrests by now. Mm -hmm. So this makes mm -hmm. me think this is an actual legitimate threat. There's something going on because when it's real, the FBI is nowhere to be seen. They can't do their job That's when right. it's an actual legitimate <laughs> threat. These people, they've seen the same vehicle and the same people in their area numerous times, mm -hmm. and yet the FBI can't get them. Mm -hmm. That's been going on for over a year, and they're not doing anything about it. And this is a small town 
uh, USA. Yeah, I, I, I doubt mean, there's a lot of Montana, Arabic people driving Wyoming. around in the same vehicle. Yeah, exactly. Now, and this is interesting, I think, too, because we look at the fact that just recently we've had these massive hacks of uh, federal employee databases, even getting, I think it was four and a half million fingerprints. I mean, if you can get somebody's fingerprints, you can certainly find out what their uh, jobs are within the military. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy when the government collects everything on people, it makes everybody vulnerable, even the people who work for the government. Joe, I remember years and years ago when they first started doing these automated toll uh, technology, first started presenting itself. I remember there was a debate in the Netherlands over whether they would allow this or not. People were concerned about their privacy, and they were so concerned about it because their government there, you know, being a good, uh, you know, a Dutch government where everything is very efficient and everything, they were keeping all the all this information about the citizens on three-by-five cards. They had them packed so tightly that when the the Germans came in with a blitzkrieg, very rapidly overtook their, their country, they tried to destroy these records, but they were packed so tightly they couldn't set them on fire. And so... The Nazis got all this information and just used it as a shopping list to get anybody that they thought might be a problem for them. Anybody that was Jewish, anybody that would oppose them as a political uh, opponent or whatever, just use it as a shopping list to go round people up and take them to concentration camps. And that's precisely what our government has created, even for its own employees here. Well, I mean, also, too, you have operational security, OPSEC. There's a lot of people who post information on Facebook that they just shouldn't be posting as well, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that when you when you look at someone's profile and you accept that friend, just because you see a picture of someone who looks friendly, that doesn't mean that's who it is. And there's a lot of these guys who troll these accounts, and they know based on being overseas, someone will get their name and go, all right, start looking for this guy's Facebook account. And sure enough, you'll have guys saying, oh, I'm an interrogator for the U.S. Army. I'm this and that. Oh, this is where I live. They don't make anything private. They don't they just, most people don't think it'll ever happen to them. And that's one way you can get a lot of this information too. And it can come back and bite you in the butt. Well, and of course we see that with uh, people who aren't in the military, right? They're talking and they, and they may be talking about stuff that is perfectly innocent. They may be talking about politics and they may get uh, identified by the government as being somebody who is a threat to them. That's what we're seeing in this latest Planned Parenthood situation where you've got a CNN anchor using the term of art that the government has just created. They're creating a new department under FEMA, under Homeland Security, that is going to look at violent extremists. They're going to identify them as uh, before they do anything, just as Wesley Clark floated the tri trial balloon. Uh, Congressman McCall was putting in the legislation, and of course it just passed through committee, breezed through there unanimously on its way to becoming a law where they're going to come after people just because they identify, based on their computer models, whether or not they think you're going to be some kind of a threat to them. And as Wesley Clark said, you know, you can exercise your free speech, that's fine, but we put people in prison camps that we thought were threats to us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put you in a, a prison camp if we think that you might become an extremist, if you might become violent. And some of the things that he mentioned off of social media were, well, let's say that you, uh, your girlfriend broke up with you, you lost your job or whatever. They're looking at all of that stuff. Yeah, they're saying that you're depressed, you're, you're, you're drunk posting uh, stuff, and then they go back and look at your pictures. you got pictures with guns everywhere, yeah. and you're sitting there doing all these you know, little poses. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, this guy, he, he's about to snap. Yeah. His girlfriend broke up with him. He owns guns. He's obviously going to go on a violent rampage. Yeah. Let's go get this guy. You post a lot of pictures of yourself holding guns on, uh, on the Internet. You're, you're liable to uh, even have them use you as a patsy and then put those pictures up to justify the fact, look at this guy was crazy. Or have the VA contact you and go, you know what, yeah. sir, we're going to have to take your benefits away. We're no longer going to be able to uh, give you any more patient care. Um, we've deemed you, uh, you know, crazy. So we're going to have to come and take your guns. Or Social Security, although yeah. I don't think to me people on Social Security are really, well, maybe they are using social media. I guess a lot of them are using uh, well, Facebook. Well, a little bit yeah. more and more. Yeah. <laughs> well, look at this also, because we, we're talking about these guys, Middle East uh, individuals are contacting uh, U.S. military and making threats to them. This article comes out, Arabic is now the most common language of refugees in America. There's a mess. Not only are we working with ISIS and Al-Qaeda, creating these organizations, equipping them, training them. And we've had numerous times we've talked about that. There's been, there's been a video caught of them delivering weapons, uh, massive quantities by helicopter, or they pull out of an area and just let these guys uh, take it over. But now we're stepping it up to where our government has said, we're, we're going to uh, launch airstrikes against anybody that we think are pro-U.S. rebels. That's something Obama's been going after for a long time. He is hell-bent on going after Syria. Mm -hmm. They oh, yeah. want to, and it's funny because they keep doing this under, you know, the beard of the Cecil the Lion, the uh, <laughs> the, the the new plane wreckage stuff that's washed up on the island. 
Yeah. You know, but meanwhile, while they're talking about this and everyone in the country is in tears and up in arms over this lion in Africa, Obama is trying to put us full on in war with Syria. Absolutely. And, and of course, this is, again, going back to Wesley Clark, the same guy who was just floating the trial balloon about uh, locking, de detaining people, putting them in prison camps like we did uh, Japanese uh, people just because they were Japanese during World War II saying that we're going to identify people and put them away. It was Wesley Clark who said that Syria was on the list. He said it was on, next on the list a long time ago. He had a list of uh, several countries that we were going to go to war with. But when we look at this article about uh, Arabic, they're pointing out that of the 11,300 refugees that have been admitted to the U.S. this year, 4,400 of them speak Arabic. In other words, that's more than a third of the people coming in. So not only are these people our allies, not only are we equipping people who are rebels that are pro-U.S., so to speak, okay, but uh, just like we created al-Qaeda, we called them the Mujahideen when we created them against the Russians, uh, and then uh, Osama bin Laden became our most wanted man or whatever. Well, that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get a membership. It helps fund our operation. I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.